Hello class, welcome to Anamika Ma'am's classroom. Today I will discuss about object oriented programming. So what is object oriented programming? Object oriented programming is a modular approach which allows the data to be applied within stipulated program area. That means here we are working on some data and functions together. Suppose I give you an example. Uh, suppose 5 and 6 are data and we want to add them. So 5 and 6 are data and addition is a function. So we are working together with some data and functions in the object oriented program. So I am uh, telling here object object. What is object verb that I want to explain? Here is the object. Object is a unique entity which contains data and function that means characteristics and behavior. Data called characteristics and function called behavior and this together is called an object oriented programming. So what is object? Each and everything around us are objects like pen, pencil, book, laptop, you, me, do, all things are objects. I will give you an example that understandable to you. Suppose a one table. Here one table, the characteristics of table are its color. Suppose it is a brown color or dark brown color. Size may be a pen, may be plastic and its size may be uh, it is dining table or study table. Uh, so it uh, depends on the size. So these are color, type, size and uh, suppose price, company name. These are the characteristics of a table. And behavior means it, it uses. Table is used for to keep different things, used to study, used to keep place. So these are the behavior of an object, that means of a table. So, one object has some state that means characteristic and behavior that means has some users. Let's take another example microwave. Microwave characteristic is name of the company, color, size, size, maybe price. These are the characteristics of one microwave. And behavior, its users of a microwave are its behavior. Suppose it is used to boil water, used to reheat the cooked items, used to cook vegetables. These are the behavior of a microwave. So, with all together some characteristics and behavior form one object. This is the microwave. Let's take another example. Suppose a pen here. Pen, characteristics of pen is ink. It is blue ink or black or green or red. This is one of its characteristics. Then ripple, what kind of ripple it is, gel or ball, what kind of ripple it is, it is another characteristic of a pen. Then cap, these are the different characteristics of a pen. Suppose it price, company name, also other characteristics. Then behavior, behavior means it is used, used to write on paper. So it is behavior of a pen. So, pen is an object which uh, occupies some characteristics and as well as behavior. Then, next I want to explain classes. Class is a set of objects. That means, um, if you have uh, 10 or 20 pens, then this is, it is a, uh, the class, this pen class has different types of objects in a class pen. And each object of a class causes same attribute and common behavior defined within the class. So all pen characteristics have same or uses same for writing purpose. Then since an object is the product of a class, so it is also called an object that thing. That means same kind of thing, same kind of thing. Suppose all our pens are all are using for writing purpose. So that's why you can call it is the object factory. Factory 
produces the same thing in a large order. So, like this, if we have in a class, so many objects are there. That's why class is also called an object factory. Like in your class, suppose you are in play, uh, class 8A, suppose. So, all of the students of 8A are, are objects and it forms class 8A. And all you have for the same attributes and common behavior. Like all of you have the same uniform, same class teacher, same timetable, same uh, class and uh, your subject teachers also same. So, you, uh, you possess the same attributes and from the PhD. Then, example of class is suppose a car class. A car class, Honda is also a car, Nano is also a car and Maruti is also a car. So, all cars, different types of cars have uh, different unique characteristics and behavior and they belong to a common class which is called car class. Okay. Then next feature of uh, that means we, ha we have some features of object oriented programming. Suppose, suppose here object oriented programming I explain. Here principles or basic elements of object oriented programming. There are some basic elements of object oriented programming which are object classes, data abstraction, encapsulation, inheritance, polymorphism and data hygiene. I already discussed objects and classes. Now I want to discuss with you data abstraction. What is data abstraction? Data abstraction means Anything, suppose it's the act of representing the essential features without knowing the background details. It is always related to the purpose or user. That means, I give you an example, then it's clear to you. Suppose, uh, if you want to capture a photograph using a camera, then you know how to do it, how to press the button and what to do. But you don't know what is the technology behind it. That means we know only the essential parts of this without knowing the background details. Like another example, if you want to drive a car, then you know about accelerator, clutch, then gear, uh, these parts you know. But how the internal mechanism works, how it works internally, we don't know. So, abstraction means keep, keep the essential part, only you can understand essential part without knowing the background details. Okay? So, we only know uh, the essential thing, don't need to know the whole thing. Okay. Then come to the next point which is encapsulation. The system of wrapping data and functions into a single unit, that unit is called class, is known as encapsulation. That means some data, suppose 5 and 6 and functions add. 5 and 6 we want to add. So this 5, 6 and add we keep in a single unit, that unit is called class and the mechanism is called encapsulation. Capsule, you know, capsule, inside capsule, on medicine, inside capsule has some medicine. So, here encapsulate means wrapping some data and functions all together and that part is called, that, uh, the container is called class and this mechanism is called encapsulation. Then come to the next point, what is inheritance? Inheritance means to link and share some common properties of one class with other class. This can be done by extending the objects of one class into another class and moving to it. If I give one example, then it is very clear to you. Suppose animal class. 
carnivore also animal and herbivore also animal so they hear some common properties from animal class then carnivores are tiger lion leopard and herbivore are cow goat rabbit so both of the carnivore and herbivore have some common properties of animal class but they are uh also cow goat rabbit they are herbivore but they are carnivores so slight difference between them but both are from animal kingdom like all of we inherit some properties from our parents and some properties we have our own then come to the next point which is polymorphism polymorphism is the process of using a function or method for more than one purpose so one function we have we can use it more than one purpose suppose uh, give one example suppose we want to find out the volume so if we want to find out the volume maybe there are different shapes maybe the volume of cube then we need side of the cube and we put it in the formula maybe we want to find out the uh, volume of cuboid then we need length breadth height and if we want to find out the volume of sphere then we need radius but in any cases we want to find out the volume maybe different shape but my aim is to find out the volume of so volume is a single function it is used for different purposes like another example we can take suppose area if you want to find out the area of different shape maybe a rectangle area of rectangle then you need length and breadth maybe the area of circle then you need pi r square is the formula of circle area of circle then pi value already you know you only need radius and if you want to find out the uh, area of a square then we need side but uh, my purpose is find out the area so purpose is find out the area but we have different purpose and uh, but our aim is find out the area so so i want to explain one thing which is features of object oriented programming i already explained you all principles or basic elements now i want to discuss features of object oriented programming first one first point you can see it gives more emphasis on data rather than procedures that means it is more emphasis uh, on data that means suppose uh, many teachers come to your class and teach in a different way suppose one teacher uh, who emphasizes on student uh, intelligence suppose some class in class some class students are uh, below intelligent or above intelligent or average so according to that he or she changes his way of teaching so he or she your teacher emphasizes on you that means here you are the data student so uh, teacher want to emphasize on you and uh, want to change you or her way of teaching suppose any other teacher who are not bothered about uh, the uh, student maybe they are uh, below average uh, intelligence or above average or uh, average intelligence student intelligence student then also way of teaching thing so she or he don't want to bother about the student uh, and don't want to change her way of teaching whatever the student and the same way of teaching she or he can follow in the next class so this is the big more emphasis on data then it makes a complete program of problem simpler by dividing it into number of objects then the third point is the object may communicate with each other and the last one is easier to add